Hello there, and welcome to another Power On episode. Today's uh, hopefully a fairly simple repair. I've got this um, Braun Oral B uh, electric toothbrush, and it's probably about four or five years old, and runs off a rechargeable battery, and it sort of sits on its cradle, and there's an inductive sort of charging unit at, uh, at the bottom there. I'm getting only one or two days usage out of it before it has to go back on the cradle. Bit of a pain um, and so I'm just wondering whether the nickel cadmium battery that's in here can be replaced out with a bog standard Eneloop nickel metal hydride. We shouldn't have any problems with the charging, the current is going to be very small going into the battery through this inductive uh, loop here and in terms of the voltages they're pretty much um, the same sort of characteristics in terms of charging and discharging, certainly for, for a sort of low current device like this. So let's see if we can't get inside here. I understand if we get the flat parts of the nose, the plastic nose here, um, just inside the jaws of the adjustable spanner there, if we give this a bit of a twist, there we go. It's sort of an anti-clockwise twist. And a, seems to pop out. Let's just straighten it back up again. Gently slip this out. And there we go. Now inside there is a spring which goes against the base there. On the top side we've got the PCB. And maybe if I can bring it a bit closer. So we've got the uh, on-off button here. Oh yeah, that's uh, probably not a good idea to operate that when it's not in its casing. We've got some contacts here, one for the base of the battery. I can just see the nickel metal, uh, sorry, the nickel cadmium battery in there. And it looks like a double A sized battery, although I can't get to it yet. Um, now I understand to get at it, we need to remove the PCB and this black clipped uh, induction coil at the bottom here. This is a bit that picks up the current for the charging. And this unclips, but before we unclip that, we actually have to remove the terminal on the battery, which means desoldering one, two, three, four contacts so this PCB can actually lift out of position. So I'll do that off camera. Um, you can either use a bit of um, solder braid to suck up the solder from this, or you can um, use a solder sucker or something like that. But uh, yeah, let's come back after I've done that. Okay, here we are back. Let me just zoom in a bit. Uh, and we should be able to see a little bit more detail. So what I've done, yeah, I've desoldered uh, the two pads here, which are for the motor. Just be, be careful here, we've got a capacitor in the center here, surface mount capacitor. Make sure you don't dislodge that. This one looks to be on the positive terminal of the battery and the negative actually so is disconnected. Hopefully, yeah, that's disconnected. So we'll just flip that out of the way. Now the board looks to have a little plastic sprue just in, in here. So I'm just going to gently uh, lever that off without Oh, there we go, without bending the board too much. That looks like that board is now free from all those posts. Just move that a little bit further out of the way. The last thing we've got to do is again, trying to carefully, there we go, remove the printed circuit board and the charging coil. And we are left with the battery. So yeah, looking at the battery here, nickel cadmium, don't really want to use those anymore, do we? Um, there's the date, 1306, no, sorry, 0613 it must have been, yes, can't be that long ago, so that's five years old. And just trying to see whether they've got a value I would think possibly 600 milliamp hours 
AA sized, so no problem, the uh, nickel metal hydride should fit in its place. Now, in terms of these two metal strips, I might try and reuse those. Just pull those off very gently off the ends here and then try and re-weld them on. Now, if you, I've, I've got a battery spot welder and I can just pop a couple of welds on here. If you don't have a battery spot welder, which most of you won't, I'd just uh, solder directly uh, to the end. Shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, let's see if we can't do that. Okay, this is going to be a little bit tricky to do. I've blue tacked the uh, positive end just in position. And because it's such a small piece of um, nickel strip, I've got to be careful that I don't short circuit everything here. One, two, three. I don't think that did enough. Let's give ourselves a little bit more juice. That did some more. Oh yeah. That seems really really tight on there. In position. Let's just locate it with the negative lead. the positive on and there we go a bit of expulsion on that one that definitely worked you don't want to push down too hard on these because you uh, really want it to be a resistance weld if you push down so hard you uh, reduce the resistance and it doesn't heat up properly anyway okay let's see if we can't get this uh, back together so positive battery slides in Locates at um, this end here, slightly in that plastic. That seems to be an okay. Now this looks like it might be a little bit tricky to get in. Let's just get that negative terminal somehow. There we go. Pushing the plastic in, the negatives come through here. Now we just need to, that's the positive of the battery. Making sure I'm not shorting anything out as I'm doing this. Okay, now the motor connections here, they've popped through. Now let's apply some pressure around that plastic. There we go, that's just popped back down again. It's looking very good indeed. I just need to band that new nickel strip over. And we've just got three simple solder joints to do. And just bend that tab over a bit. Nice and shiny. That's one motor terminal and the second one. And now finally hmm, a bit tricky. Just get some tweezers. Solder and hold it down. That looks good. Do a quick check. Hmm. Why doesn't it work? 
Well, yeah, that was a, a bit bonkers. Um, trying to switch it on and off, nothing was happening. Checking the battery voltage. Um, 1.3, sorry, just bring that uh, into view so you can see what's happening. Oh, it's a bit bright, is that, isn't it, on the screen? Let me just tip it slightly so you can see it better. Uh, positive up here, negative down here. So yeah, I've got 1.3 volts. It's a full battery, is that? But it wouldn't switch on. Um, so I just popped upstairs to the bathroom and, and uh, just put the charger through there and then tried it. Works fine now. So, yeah, I don't know, removing the battery, maybe the chip drops out, and uh, but uh, re-energizing it by uh, exposing it to, uh, to the coil uh, seems to uh, get it back working again. So, yeah, we just need to put this back together, maybe give it a little bit of a <clears throat> clean, um, and then uh, we should be done. Okay, that's um, cleaned up a bit inside. There's a rubber seal here, which is attached to the shaft. And also provide some sort of uh, sealing to stop water getting down into the mechanism. So we just need to clip that back in position. That's okay. Pop the um, spring back in. Doing any last checks. And then Getting it the right way around. The switch this way. Now it's a bit of a an anti-clockwise to remove. I'm going to try the opposite. Oh, is that going to be just a straight push? It's oh, about. Maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah, straight push does it to uh, get it back in. And so there you have it. Yeah, fairly straightforward um, replacement. You can always solder those battery terminals. No need to spot weld them, I don't think. Um, uh, yeah, well, let's see how it works. See you now.